Well, ha hello there, everyone. Oh dear God. Right, well, hello there, guys. Welcome back. So, we're here for another flight sim video today. We're just in cinematic camera here, enjoying our aeroplane at Copenhagen. As we're getting ready to fly from here at Copenhagen, down to, um, down to Manchester. So it's Echo Co Kilo Charlie Hotel, down to Echo Golf Charlie Charlie. So we're going to prepare our flight for today. So it's a new flight, and we're going to fly from EKCH to EGCC. I don't care about flight numbers and stuff. Um, we've got active weather or on current nav data, so that'll do me fine. Um, now we're going to land runway 23 Romeo because it's one of the preferred to land on at Manchester. And our aeroplane today is OYKM. It's a 232. So we'll make we'll make ourselves a new aeroplane, which is absolutely fine. Oscar Yankee, Kilo Alpha Mike, and we're on A319231. Joyous, we don't have one of those in the system. We'll be a 131. Um, that is all accurate to us. Configuration, EDTO, we don't care about. Save that. Save the aircraft. So, that is that. We'll randomise the payload. Find a route. So that's our route today. We're going to depart via an, o to, uh, an Odin SID from Odin. It's a Lima 975 all the way to Lazra. Then Uniform Lima 975 to Lipso. Then a Rossu 1 Golf. To show you that in real terms, we'll just have a look at um, Sky Vector. There you go. So uh, we arrive from Lipso. We actually go direct. Well, Ross is, I believe, in roughly this area. And then it's an arrival into Manchester. So we get airborne out of Copenhagen. Um, fly pretty much due west. To, well, fire to Odin. It's a little bit, I believe, we want to fly sort of. sort of thing. Over the peninsula of Denmark. Passing Essieberg. And, um, yeah, it really doesn't make a difference. Out over the North Sea, passing some of the oil rigs on on the way. Dropping into Yorkshire, uh, right over Humber, the Humber Estuary. And then dropping into Manchester. Cool. Alternate-wise, I'm going to do one close one, which is going to be Liverpool. Which we're just, we can leave that as a direct two. And then a secondary alternate, which... I'm, which I'm going to put further away, which is going to be Newcastle. My logic behind that is I want one alternate that's um, that's quite close, so Liverpool. That and we'll go to Liverpool if Manchester's closed for um, a non-weather-related reason, shall we say? So um, you know, for example, an emergency on the airfield or anything like that. That basically means we can't land. We we'll then take the airplane at Liverpool, which is close enough, quite easy transfer to get the passengers back to Manchester. Um, if we needed to, but then we've also got Newcastle available, so we can head up there, and that's if we get weathered out of um, Manchester. We're not expecting to be weathered out, but it's always better to plan for that, um, and it's 150 nautical miles, and that, that, that's obviously a further leg, but that you've got the Pennines that run roughly sort of through here in the UK, um, and um, they can block most of the weather systems, the west coast of the UK is a lot wetter than the east coast, for example. So we could go to Leeds Bradford. That that would be an, another alternate. However, Leeds Bradford's fairly famous for its crosswinds. So if we're having wind issues at Manchester, we'll probably have them at the, here as well. Um, Doncaster Sheffield is not usually... Well, sorry, Doncaster is not a particularly busy airfield, so they don't have the capacity to handle... You know, they, they don't have the capacity to handle us as an alternative, or as a diversion. Or East Mids... East Mids, they're East West as well. Um, actually, we'll put East Mids because that, that, that'll be closer. So I'll put EGNX. Yeah, there we go. See, so yeah, that's only 50 miles. But by the time. We'll leave that as a direct too as well. I'll just say edit. And just DCT. 
and validate. Yes, there we go. So, and then our second alternate will be East Mids. Take off alternate, we don't need one of those, but it would probably be Malmu over here. Uh, we we want to go Malmu. Well, we'll put it in there as I sort of planned. E S M S, um, and that'd be East Mids. Priority flight time. Um, we'll just find adequate airport. So it wants more than what we've given it, basically. But yeah, we could also, you know, if we're having an emergency, you know, en route alternates. Uh, you got Humberside. Again, that is a short runway, I believe. Oh, 7,200 feet. That's fair enough. That, we could get an Emerson of that, no problem. Uh, you've got Leeds Bradford over here. You've even got Leeming, Teesside. East Mids, um, any of the RAF bases, Doncaster, yeah, I'd not be concerned. So I'm going to disable EDTO and we'll compute the flight. So we've got a release fill of 5,400. Um, yes, so planned, so got enough fuel for 2 hours 27 minutes. Planned trip times 1 hour 30 minutes. Um, cool, happy with that. We've got well, transiting danger areas. In reality, this would be a fairly major issue. Dogger, Dogger, I mean Dogger Bank. So that these are basically active shooting, um, active shooting ranges. That either you can have naval guns, artillery, or uh, military aircraft shooting it in. So it's stuff we'd want to, you know, check, check, uh, well, check out what's going on in there. Judging by the areas, that's marked as dangerous. Uh, it'll be sort of airplanes doing ACM. But since we're in flight sim, we're the only people in the, in the world, we're not too concerned. As you can see, I did this flight previously as a test, but we'll uh, do, th so we'll, we've got that. Uh, what we'll do is just work our way through. I'm going to drag this over on my other screen now, and we're going to be ready to, pre pre to prepare the aircraft for departure. So um, I'm going to reduce that, but I'll um, and go and stop setting our aeroplane up. So you can see I was just setting the doors up earlier. But we'll do our fuel first, which I'm going to make 5,600. It's 200 kilos extra fuel, you know, a little bit more, well, not even 200. Just a, just a little bit extra, just for insurance purposes. And we'll do our takeoff weight, um, which is going, so I said it's your fuel weight, it's going to be 55, 36, 55 five decimal, well, it's 36, so it's 55 five decimal 4. And we'll put that there. Okay, five five decimal four slash three one. Three one is no that's gross weight. Zero fuel weight. Fifty-five decimal four. There we go. That is us loaded up. So you can see we've got um sixteen ninety passengers on board. Plus our crew. Sound complement of crew. Which needs to be four of four really. Oh no, we've got two flight deck crews, so that's two or four, that's right. So yeah, 50, that's 55.4, which is absolutely fine for our zero fuel weight. What we can do is now tell GSX to start our boarding procedure. And we can uh, open up our... I'm going to open this up in a 2D mode just because it's easy to read. We'll do the initialization. So the easiest way to do this is, is you work your way down from right to left because Airbusness. EKCH slash EGCC. Um, our flight number, I will grab that actually. To Manchester. Um, what's the Scandi? It's SK five four one. We are so we're going to be Sierra Kilo five four one. Cost index thirty five. Um. 
yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, like, let me just check our cruise level. Flight level 360. Fuel will take, um, zero fuel weight, we said was 50, let me check why. <coughs> zero fuel weight, it's 5, 5. Decimal 3, 6. No, it's 5. 5, decimal 4, slash 31. Point five. There we go, that gives us a fuel prediction of nine, yeah. Okay, what are now doing? See a Vaughan card, sir, please. Oh, in fact, that was a terrible version of that accent. We're departing 04 Romeo via an Odin 2 Alpha. I am just going to. There we go, shut the cockpit door, get a bit more quiet in here. Although that AC is quite loud now. That'll probably be a nice level. Insert. <coughs> and, yeah, that is that part that's done. We now need to quickly go and do, no, not that. We go to Odin. And then we're going to say Airways. And then, um, let me get my flight plan up. So it's a Lima 975. So this is sort of basically a bit like telling a car sat nav, I want you to go down this road to this exit. That's what we're putting in here. So Lima 975 is the airway. So that's effectively the road. And then we're going to a place called Lazra. So that's like saying, I want you to go to Junction 25. Um, after Lazra, it's a uniform Lima 975. to a place called Libso, and then it's our arrival from there. So I'll program that sep I will program that one to a nearer because the weather can change en route and all that kind of stuff. So it's total distance of 533 miles. Estimated landing fuel is 1.4. What is our estimated landing fuel? Arrival fuel 1.8. So we need a tank for uh, 400 kilos extra, extra gas, which we can do. So what I'll do is go options, fuel, and then it's five, nine. What we'll do is we'll make it six tons straight of fuel, which is only a third of a tank for this flight, which you know, shows that the Airbus is actually quite fuel efficient. We'll go back to our initialization, and then we added effectively five tons extra. So actually zero fuel weight, and that, that all remains the, pretty much the same in fairness. So we can now go and do our fuel, our fl uh, flaps take off, flex, we'll flex to 53, it's a nice long runway here, and then we'll just let that auto populate, so it's 133, 133, 134, so V1, that, that's who are committed to the takeoff, we then rotate at 133 as well, so in reality, our V1 would be higher than our V rotate, if that makes sense, however, just for aeroplane logic, if V1 is higher than VR, which is the, the speed at which we, we rotate the nose into the air, we uh, the aeroplane just sets it as the same number, and then V2 is our safety speed, so if we lose an engine, we climb away at 134 knots. Um, cool. And I am... Wait, did I, set, I set the fuel to 6, didn't I? Yep, 6, not 5. Let me fix that, and that's going to change our takeoff weights as well, so we'll go back and do that. So just change that to 6. Let's go back to flight plan. 2.4 landing fuel, which is much better overall. And then uh, we'll redo the takeoff. So what I'll do is I'll just clear it out. It may actually still be 133, but our V2 was probably the one, one that will change. 134, there we go, and not faster. Um, Righty, so um, apart from that, that is uh, actually the last thing we can do is pre-configure our, um, our console up here. So we'll put 10,000 feet as our first altitude we'll climb to. 10,000, um, and our speed will be V2 plus 15. So V2 is 135 plus 5 is 140, 150. 
is 15. So that is that configured. Everything else for the time being can be left. I'm now going to... Um, Yeah, you can see we're still loading the bags. Yeah, you can, you can see the bag trolleys are left, so the bags are being loaded now. I'll just go back to the cinematic camera. So what we'll do is we'll do a jump cut when we're boarded and ready to go. Um, I'll come back and we'll, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll start flicking some more switches. All right, speak to you guys in a moment. All righty, well, just like that, we are back in the flight deck. It has been a matter of seconds. The passengers are aboard, the bags are aboard. Uh, the cabin crew just called to say they've pushed the doors. You can see the aircraft are leaving. Obviously, the ground tugs are leaving. What we'll do is we'll put that back up because we don't need it. And we're going to start thinking about getting out of here. So, our wheel trucks, they're set. So, our parking brake, that's set, not our wheel trucks. But I'm going to dive in here and grab my external connections. The AP is online, so I don't need GPU. So I can disconnect that. I can disconnect the ground shocks. AP bleed is on. AP must switch. Dush, dush. We'll throw the beacon light on. And um, we'll prepare for pushback and departure. Okay, whilst the tug's driving up, what we'll do is just get, not, not Manchester. We'll get this on screen. So we are at gate Charlie, uh, uh, Charlie Gate Triple Purple. So we're about here, and we're taxiing to runway zero for Romeo, which is this runway. It's actually the other end of that runway. So we're going to leave down, um, down Quebec, Quebec Delta, down Delta on Charlie, and run down to the end of the runway. Turn around, and then take off towards the UK. Okay, so they're, they're, they're getting us connected downstairs. Meanwhile, we'll do the before, to, before departure stuff. So all the fuel pumps can come on. Locking gear. Okay, what I'll do is whilst he does that, I will turn off the nose wheel steering system. That way, it's, you know, you can see, basically, I've turned the nose wheel steering system off. We also get a notification to say that, that, it's, that there's a pin in. And what that means is that that's like a double safety mechanism. Um, to ensure that we don't uh, have an accident with the nose steering. Okay, seatbelt sign, that goes on now. It will be out of check push back. Departure check completed. Bypass pin inserted. Release parking brakes. Release parking brakes, okay. Commencing push. All we'll engines clear. Start at wheel. We'll start engine number one. So at start sequence will be two and one. We'll leave that open and we'll let the engine start. Oh. Throttle, stop moving me. There we go. Now, what I will do is we'll just put the external camera just so we'll. Uh, have ourselves pushed, so effectively are our bodies on the uh, roundabout here, and we'll then just taxi away from that basically. So I'm not dealing with the GSX stuff, but yeah, we'll taxi off in that general direction. Stop here and complete the pushback procedure. Don't push me faster. Okay, you seem unable to do that, so I'm just going to abort the pushback and apply the parking brakes, on the tail brakes. So now that he's disconnected, we'll turn our nose wheel steering back on, and we'll also set the parking brake. We set the parking brake first, and then wait to disconnect it, but, you know, things happened. Right, we've got a uh, good start on the number one. Uh, so, yep. Good start, number one. Okay, got a uh, book cargo door alert. So we'll just use our system here to check that the door's been shut. No, it hasn't. Good job we checked. So we'll uh, give it a couple of seconds to close because it's behind the number two. 
fix that door there, which is now closed. So what we'll do is um, now start engine number two. I like that to start up. We'll we'll get on this panel. I'm just going to put the flight plan just so we've got that handy. Um, and also now that we're going to rate a taxi, I will set my chronograph to on. And yeah, we're ready to go. So we'll push the pedal disconnect so I can steer with my rudder tiller. And park brake will be released. Engine number one is correct uh, engine two is starting. It means we're, we should be able to do an nice match of taxi without much ado. For whatever reason, Chase Plane won't let me steer my camera using the hat switch left and right. Okay, I'll bring this plane to a stand, wait for both engines to be started. And then we'll just check hydraulics because, yeah, both all three systems are pressurised, so I should have steering input. Is really, really strange. Um, let me just check ground connections. Pin wasn't moved, was it? I should have seen that. That's irritating that I missed that. Okay, but now that we've got the, ta oh, the taxi, we'll set our taxi light to on, which blinds everyone. Turn off lights to on, seatbelt sign, that remains on. Um, that's two good starts, so we'll set that to normal. Turn the AP read off, set that to auto. The AC has come back on in the cabin now, which is nice. And we'll uh, do our turn off to depart. So I'll reach the parking brake again, and we'll create a taxi. So we said we're going to taxi out from here. It's going to take our time. And uh, we're so as discussed, we're taxiing down Quebec. So it's Quebec, then Delta. We'll assume we click across one, two, three, zero, um, and then following the text right along from there. Can do. I've also got my, my briefing pack for the charts for uh, Manchester up under the monitor, but again, we don't need to think about that yet. Quebec Delta's this way. Yep, there's runway one, two, three, zero. So again, we'll assume we've got clearance to cross. What I'll do is just check the left and you will check your side and ensure there's no traffic coming. And it's going to land on our head because that will just be embarrassing for all involved. Hmm. Now, as we're taxiing, I'm going to press F7 once to select the first notch of flat. Auto brake will be set to on and um, my air brakes can be set for departure. My speed brake correction. That's runway uh, 4 left, 2-2 two, two left. So we're actually going to cross over our departure. Note that so we're on that, see I want to turn right here. And we'll just taxi out. You know what? I, ha I never put myself there because I'm recording this in OBS just as a test to see how, you know, if OBS is a bit better optimised than um, 
then the, um, or you know, works a bit better because I've got the audio controls that I don't have in, um, you know, in, sorry, in GeForce. And yeah. Well, it's actually. And that's obviously Copenhagen in the background. Scene we used once again for the, for the departure like of this flight is Flight Tampa to Copenhagen. And we're landing at UK 2000's, um, yes, UK 2000's um, Manchester. Now, we're taxiing along here still. We're going to just taxi down here. And this will help. Would be yeah, that that will cross us over the runway. We are approaching the end of the runway though, so I'm just gonna cheat a little. Yeah, we're, we're approaching our departure end, which is nice. I read it's part of which is interesting. Let's bring the plane to a stand and do a quick flight control check. It may be because I was full right deflection to taxi out. So what I'll do is just press pedal disc. Yeah, there you go. Pedals have just gone back to standard. Hide, and I want to do a, a flight control check before departing. So, park brake set to secure us, and flight controls. Full left. Full right. Neutral. Full back, full forward, neutral, full left, full right, neutral. Okay, happy with that. Uh, our trim is within bounds. Fuel, yeah, we are, we're still above the departure fuel we, we briefed for, so pretty comfortable on that front. Um, predictive width, so yeah, we'll do our last takeoff items, get rid of the last stuff. Uh, TCAS will be set to auto mode. Now that will clear for departure, we'll set ourselves to TARA. We'll set our takeoff lights to on, seatbelt sign on, APU, that can come off now. Strobes, those can come on. And we're now ready for departure. So what we'll do is that. Press the pedal press. And we'll just taxi out this way. Again, clear on the approach, check, we're doing a lights camera and you are you'd be doing the action. Again, I know there's no one coming because A I've got the TCAS on and B um, there's no other aircraft in the simulation right now. So I'm not too concerned. Okay, just the tail brakes. Okay, so, uh, scan five in the network here for takeoff. Let's stand up, push them up. So it's stable. Man flex. SRS runway 80 knots V1 rotate positive right landing gear up coming out past the airfield what I'll do, pop the hood out, and we'll just fly the flight director. You see we're going up like an absolute rocket. What I'll do is do my turn on course. There you go, that's just in climb mode. Alright, that's climb. The annoying thing is, with my joystick, 
it's great, but I can't tell when I'm in climb mode when I'm not. And there we go, we're climbing out on course now. Autopilot one engaged. Flaps up. Climbing away. So what we'll do is we'll keep you guys in the flight deck until um, we get to uh, seatbelt signs off, which will be about 10,000 feet. So now climbing for that, my throttle's move itself again. There you go, throttle climb. Ground spoilers can be disarmed. Flaps there up, TAR right, TA's on. No ECAM memos to note. We passed transition level already, ECAP are standard. We're still being clear to climb a flat to, to cruise, which is flat level 3660. It's a pretty quick climb from here. Since we're clear of the immediate sort of terminal area of the air, airfield, I'm going to turn the landing lights off. Take nose lights, take off lights, can go off. The nose is we're still climbing pretty steeply, um, so I'll wait. Well, I'll wait after this turn, and then I'll turn the belt up, uh, belt up signs off. You can see we're 11 minutes in, 11 minutes since we left the gate, and we're already climbing through 8,000 feet, 8,500. You can see VOR to, I thought VOR is tuned to Odin, or at least 70 miles to run to, to the Odin VOR. Um, yeah, after this turn, I'll um, hit the belt of signs off because but no steep turns after this. Yeah, that's much less steep. And the nose is going to go down now as we accelerate to a uh, fast climb of, of 301 knots. Okay, so belt up signs. Those can come off. And we'll... Um, do a nice sort of interior cinematic as we roll out. So that's going to be do, do it for the departure of this flight. Hopefully you guys will all enjoy the video so far. Come back in part two, uh, which will be, in, well, I'll film it about an hour, but it should be released either tomorrow or the day after, um, when we do our arrival in Manchester. But during the practice, it's actually a really fun arrival, um, and what I was really pleased with. So hopefully I can pull that off again. Um, yeah, so far I've really enjoyed the flight, so hopefully you guys have too. And yeah, if you have, hopefully we'll see you back, back in the next part. Until then, bye for now. Okie doke, so just like that we are back in the room, we're now at top of the descent for, oh well, sorry, we're 25 minutes from top of descent for Manchester. So let's do our approach plan. So, um, what we'll do is we'll go and do the arrival first. So, um, just looking at the arrival. Oh, sorry, it's going to be an ILS 23 right approach and then a Rosson 1 Golf. And then we'll insert all that. And that then slightly recalibrates. Actually, our top of set remains pretty much exactly that. No, it pushes back by three minutes. So there we go. So our top of set is now 1748. Uh, S28 time on the ground is around an hour and five minutes from now. What we can do is just have a look at our approach phase. Because I'm using a clear skies weather because I just want a nice relaxed flight without any weather worries. QNH 1013, temperature 23, Mag magnetic wind is going to be 270 at five. It's five miles down the runway pretty much. Our decision height, because I'm, just because I'm going to fly the approach, it's going to be 500 feet. Visual approach pace 134 knots, VLS 129. What I'll do is I'll make it 137 knots, just because that I, I, I just feel a bit more comfortable being a bit faster, and especially since we've got a nice long runway at Manchester. I'm not going to do landing distance calculations, but I'm pretty happy with that. We'll just take a medium braking, and we it's. Um, let me get the airport up in front of me, edit this out. If we look at taxi diagrams for Manchester aerodrome chart, we're landing 2-3 right. Um, 
will be, you should be able to hit pretty nicely via that taxiway there, which I can zoom into, which is exit 80. Oh, it's an exit Bravo Delta, sorry. Um, uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll exit Bravo Delta, backtrack, and then we can do that. We can exit with Alpha or Bravo, and then we'll be parking on Pier B at Manchester. Okay, well, as I say, we're back in the back in the flight deck now, so I'm just going to go and do some more cinematic stuff. Okay, that's broken. So yeah, we'll do some more cinematic stuff, and we'll see you guys when we are ready to land. See you soon. Alrighty, just like that, we are back. So, we're now descending over the UK. I still haven't got my OBEX England in. I do need to go ahead and get that done. I'm going to pull the mic down. Mic coming down. Alright. So, in the flight deck of the A320. So, you can see, we are now, we're basically coming down over Pole Hill. And then turn, go towards Burnley, which I'm assuming is Burnley and then turn around and come back in for the intercept and then we're actually going to, from Rosson, we'll go due south to the end of the ILS so we'll make that change now so what I'll do is just grab centre fix, or centre intercept 3-0 ok, not, not, well not we'll just clear that out clear Manchester no, so clear Manchester and then we'll clear the discontinuity and then do that like that. So that makes a much simpler arrival for us. So the airfield is sort of in our... Well, it's 20 miles away, so it's over in that area there, basically. So we're just going to do a spiral descent, almost. I'm actually going to pull... Wait, what does that want us to do? Okay. So we'll, take ten, we'll get rid of CI203, because CI203 is part of a turn, which we're not interested in. And so... CI23, we're now below profile, interestingly. Uh, well, what we'll do is I wonder... If we do that... What if we just went direct to Center effects? A little put actually no, we're probably in about, about the right bit of airspace to do that. So if I do direct to CI23 right, insert, and we're now well above. Okay. You feeling alright, plane? Put your autopilot back in. And we'll do that, and we'll just stand the air brakes out. So on. Uh, that's what it did. Cool, I now know what that bug is. Because I had it a couple of times in the cruise and I just thought I was like knocking my controls or something. But no, okay, we'll now go down to 3000, open descent, and we'll just say 246 knots of, of speed. And it's actually uh, 3500 feet, is our, is our final approach fix. Yeah, so it's at or above 3,500. We'll, ju we'll just do a, a steep descent down. Now that we're passing 10,000 though, we will put the belt-up signs on. Uh, and we'll go through and we'll hit these, the landing lights to on. Nose lights on, strobes, turn-offs. We're basically lighting the aeroplane up so everyone around us can see us. That's pretty perfect. So you can see we're now flying a steep descent profile. Yeah, now, part of our vacate. So this is our um, ILS, um, our ILS plate. So we don't really care about ATC comms because we're not doing those today. But you can see that, so we'll put the Manchester VOR in because that's what we're going to use for our fix. But the, we start descending at 10.3 DME to the Manchester VOR. Has it put Manchester in? Yes. So, 
we've got nine miles to six thousand feet. Eh, that, that that's about doable. Um Yeah. We've got we're flying with a slight headwind component as well. So it's just it's you know it's a steep descent, but we should make that. I believe. Hmm. Hang on, we'll see. 8,600 at 16.8 DME. We'll see what we're doing at 15.8 at DME. So that's 200 feet a mile, roughly. 500 feet a mile. So 2,500 feet, yeah, we're at 6,000 feet. So that's fine. What we can do is take it into heading mode. Give ourselves a delay vector. I do find it easier to operate in, in, in a rose mode at this point. Oh, sorry, yeah. Um, where basically, in this mode, it's not like having it in your car sat nav mode. It's like a top down view. So it gives us like a full 360 perspective around the aircraft. I will set my terrain um, warnings on. You can see we're turning towards the terrain. But the highest terrain on scope is 2,100 feet, and that's within a, uh, within a 10 mile radius. Yeah, it's still 2,100 within 20, so I'm, I'm not concerned. Cool. And what we'll do is we'll just do a full 360 around. So, we'll turn away. And then we'll turn final um, from, about from about 16 miles, I think. Because, yeah, by that rate of descent, we should be there down in time and then we'll all uh, it once we hit the altitude we'll, we'll, we'll throw the anchors out basically so what we'll do is we'll just give the um, cabin crew warning cabin crew please take your seats oh no that's the actual cab call oh well we'll leave the HF comms on um Four and a half thousand, yeah, we're good to turn back now. Um, yeah, we are descending down over the Pennines, so it's worth keeping an eye on, but we are totally fine. What I can do is just remove that and put my speed brakes into armed mode, which now just, you can hear the power coming in. I'll now arm approach mode, enable ILS mode. So we're now on a 19 mile final to the airfield. So we are a little bit f far out, but it is what it is. I'd rather... Well, it's one of those things. It's better to be lo lower. Only time it's not good to be lower is when you're flying into a mountain. We've got terrain issues, shall we say. So I'm now going to put this screen back on. Yeah, you can see Echo Golf Charlie Charlie, pretty much at the 20 mile range ring. It'll come in once we get the full screen ahead. I'll turn the VOR pointer off now because I don't, it's not needed. And then, yeah, let the aeroplane come in on, got Lokestar now actually, so the uh, lateral mode's now, now positioning us for the ILS. Now we descend at 10 miles, so at about 13 miles is when I'll slow it to 180 knots. Because basically I like to be at 180 for, for, for the actual descent phase of the approach, or the, the descent of the ILS, and then at 5 miles, um, chop back to... Um, I'll, we'll put VAPP in, so 137 knots. It's one of the things I missed. Again, we're on 1013, so it doesn't make much of a difference, really. 
Um, so approach mode. Oh, we could press expert descent earlier. Oh well, it is what it is. Um, you can see the eye. That's now alive. Set to 13 miles. We'd, we'd throw 180 in the window. Do it at 14. No, I'll leave it to 40. Thirteen. So we've got three miles to coast down. Which we'll do no problems because the nose will start riding up and then we'll uh, Yeah. So as we slow down the nose will rise, which will then present more of the airplane to the airflow, which will then cause more drag, which will then cause it to slow down better. It works, trust me. I trust me on a pilot. Or a bit of virtual one. So I'll just put first lump of flap out. So flap one, which is just basically slats when you're on approach. Um, so cockpit checks. Ecam no blue. Um, well, actually, it's not coming down. Not on that yet. Correction. Um, yeah, we're just descending down the down the profile now. Aerodrome's in sight, so we can pretty much commit to the approach now. The only thing we'll do is call um, the stable. We'll call ourselves a stable. Um, I'll put flap two out of two hundred knots. There we go. Yeah, unfortunately, we're on virtual uh, on um, standard scenery, which, to be honest, it's not perfect, but it doesn't look too bad. Okay, back in the flight deck we go. The weather looks a bit diabolical, so I need to get a weather range now. Uh, we're at seven miles. I'm going to throw the gear out because we're not really slowing down. Yep. And then what I can do is say uh, 137 knots because you know, we're, we're going to be slowed down by that point. And this just gives us a nice fast arrival. F7. That's flap 2. Flap 3. Flap full. You can see the amount of lift that's now being produced was pushing us up. So the airplane's gonna oh that's a bit tis. And one approach speed passing through well so we actually got slowed down pretty quick there. As soon as you start dangling gear and stuff, the airplane slows down nice and quick. But we'll uh, let us let it, let it stabilize us because we're on a five mile final still, so more than enough time. So passing through a thousand feet, which we're going to be doing shortly, we're looking for a stable approach. So we're looking for everything to be sort of vaguely normal. So power is about half, which is about what you'd look for. We, we you know we're, we're centered, we're centered, we're on ILS glide path, albeit not the pappies. Uh, gears down, everything's configured, everything's the way to expect it to be. You know, if we're in full power, or idle power, trying to chase the speed at this point, we go around. Stable approach, continue. So we we'll just call stable approach, basically. And we can then continue to the DH. We set the DH at 500, even though by the plate we're at cat D, so it'd be, th be um, 391. But it's fine. It means at 500 feet, I can commit to the approach now because we're in a good place. Pappy's good, ILS good, speed good. Airplane's not falling apart, so that also is good. Continue approach. Now Emily has control. So I'm not making any control inputs now. I'm, I'm still basically leaving the aeroplane um, because the uh, because the autopilot hands you the aircraft back trimmed. You don't really have to make any control inputs. Only if it's a windy day or the wind's changing. Fly. 
60 knots, reverse idle, manual braking. Turning off to the right. Yeah, we can make that turn off. At least I think we can. Okay, and I need to reach down. Ooh. Okay. And we'll uh, turn around. We'll taxi down here. One of the items, yeah, we'll taxi this back back this way. So I've been in it. That's the Manchester Airport Air Park. Really lovely place to go spotting that, by the way. So that's landed. We landed after one hour forty three minutes after leaving the gate. Whoa! What we'll do is go gate, and I'm going to quickly get a parking gate that works. Um, we'll go for gate ten. But what we'll do in the meantime is we'll just really quickly stop our taxi. Woo! No follow me required. Oh, oh Swiss port. Why not Swiss port? Game's now going to freeze whilst all that loads. Now that we've cleared the, the, the runway, landing lights go off, turn offs go off, strobes go off, uh, nose lights goes to taxi, flaps go up, um, parking brakes off, trans TCAS goes standby, PWS goes off, and that's it. Uh, we'll check our wheel temps, they're pretty toasty. So I put them to low. That's got a fl uh, speed brake should come down now. What we can not not low, sorry, that was an idiot move. We'll put the brake right aeroplane. Come on, brake fans on. So that'll just start blowing on the wheels, getting them cooled because 150 on the indicators means they're going to get hotter before they get colder, basically. So any temperature you see immediately after landing, that's going to increase uh, because the um, the sensors aren't actually like in the middle of the brake caliper; they're part way up. Um, so it's going, yeah, that's 140 degrees. Well, that's going to increase as that, um, you know, as, as that heat conducts up. So that's why we, um, you know, it's better to put them on, leave them running for a bit, get the brakes cooled. I imagine we've got carbon brakes, so we don't get fade. But yeah. Yeah, it means they cool down faster for the next flight. They're going to be it's going to be a bit loud for the ground crew, but they're all virtual. Nobody, so who cares? Who the frick cares? Taxi, taxi light's going to come off now that we're entering the gate. That's gate ten. So I'll bring speed out to five knots, and we'll do our turn in. So it seems that the marshaller is going to be there, but he's going to be clipped into a wall. So I'm just going to use the ex my own marshalling skills to bust through the centre line a bit. Flat power's idle, so I'm just going to use that to gently roll the aircraft in, and we'll stop on the T. You can hear that's that howling sound over the engines, that's the brake fans. So they are pretty loud. Park brake is set. What we'll do is we'll uh, say, hey, can you connect the, because um, we didn't start the APU, we'll say, can you give us GPU? Okay, we'll connect chocks, because whilst we're doing that, we'll um, kill our engines. That was an idiot move. I mean, luckily we've landed, so no one cares. You parked a bit far? Well, tough nuggy. Right. Oh, yeah, I did, actually. I must have rolled forward. 
Okay, aircraft's spooling down. We'll request deplaning. Do you need to turn the beacon light off before they can safely approach? There we go. And the seatbelt sign comes off now that the engine has spooled in. Cabin crew disarm doors. So, yes, there we go. Manchester. Um, actually, we didn't stop the stop clock in the, in the cockpit. We'll go ahead and do that right now. So, it's chrono. So, it was 1 hour and 47 minutes, gate to gate. Not a bad time, a little beyond what we were anticipating, but it is what it is. Um, we'll turn that off. Brake fans can go off now. So just let... I'll leave that in, in that position then. Let me just check the gear, see if we've got a temperature, just to give you an, an illustration. Wheel, not gear. Yeah, 185. So see that temperature still climbing. Um, 190, so it's 190 across all four now. But I say that'll take a while to cool down. And since the airplane's not going anywhere, at least not for a while, it's not really an issue, so we can just leave it there. We'll open all the doors. Open left, open that, open that, open that. So, yep, yeah, they're going to... Oh, they're closing, actually, because they've unloaded now. But they're all, they're, that's the passengers' bags and some cargo leaving. Oh, here comes a bus that's going to drive straight through the terminal, which, if, cause if it drives down the road, I'll be, am I'll be amazed. Nope, it's coming straight through the terminal. Oh well, it was worth a try, but thanks so much for watching today, guys. Hopefully you did enjoy the video, I actually really enjoyed tonight's flight. Um, lovely flight, I'll be getting things like Project Fly set up for the future, so it's only going to get better from here. Um... We'll be able to do things like have bets, Jesus Christ, uh, have bets on uh, my landing right and stuff for the next video. But I, I'm, I've, I never used to really like the, F, the FS Labs Airbus, but now that I've upgraded my PC a bit, it's a lot more runnable, if that's even an English word. So it's, you know, it's a lot more stable and I just, I, I enjoy playing with it. So yes, thank you so much for watching guys. If you um, and what we'll do is we will see you very soon. Until then, bye for now.